you so freaking bad. Wrestle me. Welcome, everybody, to Juice Pro Wrestling Podcast, episode 213. No souls matter with the one, the only, the undeniable demon of fucking fear, the soul, soul taker, a.k.a. The nigga taker. <laughs> That's right. Brother taker, how the hell are you doing tonight, man? I'm doing pretty well, because right now, I had to leave the graveyard to come to some place where there's people actually alive working out. So that's what's basically what I'm doing right now. Some people may call me soul taker, nigga taker, but tonight, you can also call me the swole taker. Ah, swole tiger. Swole is the goal. Size is the prize. That's right. <laughs> Dude, I love it. So we got to do this podcast. We got we to do this podcast. Then after that, you guys got to let me do my reps in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, that's cold. Don't tell me you were fucking... Goddamn genius taker. What the hell? Getting that fucking pump. What are you benching right now? Two caskets and a tombstone. <laughs> That's right, brother. I got to ask. So what's what's the what's it like coming out of the graveyard, out of the cemetery to deal with most of you know, the incompetent live folk that walk among us these days. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. But when you deal with the soul taker, I'm the type who loves to offend the living. I'm a very, very controversial superstar on the indie scene. And everybody knows that the soul taker can say and be very unpredictable. That is correct. And I've seen some of that and I've been fucking stoked to see you apply your trade and your specific set of skills, if you will, at one promotion known as XPW here recently. What's that experience been like? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'll tell you this. I made my debut at XPW's Theater of Pain, where I send a message to one hard body, and I challenge him to XPW's Extreme Invasion back on November the 12th, where he was the victim that got placed in a body bag. Then after that, I should have dumped him in the lake over there near Staten Island, New York. Then it will be the end of hard body. But now he's probably going to be known as dead body. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. That's right, brother. So, we got uh, XPW's coming back around this month in December. You're not a part of that pay-per-view, but I understand you will be at their upcoming show in January, correct? January 21st, 2023, the Demon of Fear, the Soul Taker, returns to XPW. And I'm putting everybody on notice. I don't care who you are what faction you may be involved in, I'm coming to take souls. If you're black, your black life will not matter. Anybody that steps in the ring with me will have a lot of hell and a lot of pain 
to go through. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, man. I can't wait. What's your, uh, how do you feel about doing the deathmatch gig? Well, the soul taker has stepped in, or should I say, the soul taker has stepped out of his element into the world of extreme. People are going to see a different side of the demon of fear. Because down there in hell, there's nothing but flaming hot fire where people are being tormented. And this is my chance to torment the living. Everybody that's living, and if you decide to step in the square circle with the demon of fear, the soul taker, or should I say, the nigga taker, it is no soul's matter. Hell yeah, that's right. Man, the demon of fear, dude, you've had uh you've had quite the career thus far and you you're kind of getting a little more resurgence here as of late, which is fucking awesome to see. And along the way, man, I'm sure you have encountered many of pro wrestling um current superstars and legends either inside or outside of the fucking squared circle. I'm curious to know because I did see you were involved with a match with one monster abyss. What can you tell us about that encounter? Well, abyss, big man, but he is not as big as the demon of fear, the soul taker. Monsters are scary. Devils or should I say demons, are scarier. I am a walking demon. He is a monster that likes to deliver pain. I am the man who likes to torture people and destroy them where there's nothing left but ashes to ashes, dust to dust. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. I understand too. Uh, you you had a recent encounter. Was this uh, recently? Correct me if I'm wrong. With uh, one Teddy Long, the legendary Teddy Long. Well, Teddy Long, I haven't seen him in maybe uh, five years. Okay, where he he came to a, a promotion that I was wrestling at called Metro Pro Wrestling. He was these very special guest general manager and there was one kid that came out uh talking trash talking about why isn't he on the card and teddy long basically said who are you what are you doing here but wait a minute don't go anywhere because i think i like you and i got a present for you i'm gonna put you in a match and you're gonna go one on one with the soul taker. But I think it would be more sweet if he would say, you go one on one with the nigga taker. <laughs> Dude, Teddy Hart. I mean, the guy's a legend. Ron Simmons, fucking Doom. You a fan of them guys? Oh, yeah. Three? See, my alter ego, Michael Antoine McMahon, did something with Ron Simmons when he took a more corporate role where he was more of a, an owner of a promotion where he was talking to his commissioner and they were walking down the hall and the conversation was like this. That was a great match. You are going to make a great commissioner for UCW. And just like Donald Trump, we're going to make America white again. And, and all of a sudden, Ron Simmons opens the door, look Corky down, look Michael Antoine McMahon down, and said, damn. <laughs> damn. What about, dude, I've seen, you've been, you've kicked it with quite a few legends in the business because I've seen pictures of you with Eric Bischoff and Jim Cornette. What, I'm curious as to what, 
what was the interactions like with those guys? Well, Jim Cornette said, you're the motherfucking Undertaker. You know, his favorite word is motherfucker. <laughs> but he said, uh, he said he liked the whole ordeal. And this is like years ago when I happened to be on the show with uh, Jim Cornette. And on that same show, it was called XICW at Cobo Hall. And all of a sudden, uh, during that day, Jim Cornette wasn't able to stay throughout the entire show because Jim Cornette got a little bit hungry and left his booth. And you know who he ran into when he left his booth? Who's that? He ran into Santino Morella, which they collided, they collided out in the hallway, causing Jim Cornette to leave. Because you know the history between Santino and Jim Cornette, right? Yeah. Yeah, so with Jim Cornette slapping Santino, Jim Cornette doesn't like a lot of people, you know. So, and Santino is one. <laughs> Vince Russo is somebody else he doesn't like as well. Then you talk about the other name that I've been around, Eric Bischoff. Now, Sleazy. Eric Bischoff, when he first saw me, he uh, he said I was a big dude, that I was scary. And he said if he would have knew about me back during the Monday Night Wars, he would have put me on there on, on WCW, you know, as the, as this character. But then at the end, he said, oh, we'll probably get sued after he would have did it. <laughs> probably. <laughs> uh, because you can't have WWE with The Undertaker, then you got WCW with The Soul Taker. So it would have been it would have been something, you know. As soon as the Undertaker and Kane came out of something on Monday Night Raw, say at nine o'clock, then Soul Taker comes out on WCW Monday Night Show at the same time, and you had the fans like, "What the fuck? <laughs> we got a uh, Undertaker wannabe going against the real thing," and I think it would have been. Something at the time, you know. <laughs> yeah, for oh, yeah. sure. And I was a, li I was, I was younger then. I was a younger taker then. <laughs> I was more, uh, the Uso say Uzi, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to say I was back then. I was more niggerish back then. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Right on. Well, speaking of Undertaker, is are you aware of like is is he aware of you? Has there been any interaction? Well, I can tell you this. Years ago, I was on a show with um, the Hurricane Shane Helms, and once he heard that I was that character, he popped big, and he was like. I'm about to text Taker and tell him about you. And he said he texted Taker and Taker popped huge for the nigga Taker character. <laughs> now, it, another funny thing is the original Soul Taker is, of course, the Godfather. Yep, Charles Wright. You know, back in the uh, right back in the 80s. Type in on Google the soul taker wrestler. Godfather's picture shows up and right next to Godfather's picture, you'll see my picture next to his Wikipedia picture. So it tells you that I made a big influence in the wrestling business, especially on the indie circuit. You know, the indies are hot right now. I can tell you that. Yeah. The indies, there's a lot of guys in the indies that's just thriving. Years ago, I was supposed to retire. But this is a big resurgence because when I was 38 years old, I had my first child. 
uh, Mariah. And I said, I want her to remember her daddy as this great wrestler, as this this character. So a big resurgence has happened, which I'm getting booked in different places. There's a big request for the soul taker to come to these different promotions, which is kind of hard because you got to get me like in advance. You know, I got dates all the way going into June of next year. So, especially October is a more busy day. So, if yeah, you yeah. promoter want to use me next year for October, you gotta you gotta put that deposit down and do it from there. We interrupt this wonderful episode for a short word from our shoot sponsors. Check out Slowpoke Toys to see an ever-expanding collection of toys and collectibles. Treat yourself and get something for you. Need to get a gift for a special somebody, a buddy, a friend, a loved one, a coworker? It doesn't matter. Visit SlowpokeToys.com, the manufacturer of toys and collectibles you never knew you needed. If you want the Soul Taker slash Bigger Taker, on the show so that's mainly it is speaking all these different uh i mean you're exactly right about that uh, we've been doing a show for four years something like that now and it was kind of at the start of the boom when i met stretton and i was like dude like there's this huge thing buzz going on about wrestling again because the indies were so damn stocked with talent and they still are you know guys like you were coming out and you know, there's so many other ones. And even guys that were signed, men and women that were signed for major promotions are coming back to the indies. And it's like you said, they're thriving, which is, I think it's great. It's kind of like a harkens back to the territory days, you know, the modern version of, of that. Um, that being said, is there any one promotion, you know, look at XPW that you might want to kind of plant your feet in, you know, and that has the most talent, the most souls for the taking? Well, it doesn't matter what promotion wants the soul taker because I can tell you this. I am considered a draw at any promotion. I'm not a draw in Michigan because everybody knows who I am and they see me. But when I go out of town, people be like, oh, shit, that's the soul taker. <laughs> I'm on shows with other superstar wrestlers, you know, if I'm not in character or whatever, and I'm on shows with them, as soon as I put this on, they're like, oh, my man, you you the, you the, I can't say the word. And I'll be like, yeah, I'm the nigga taker. <laughs> and it's like, man, I've been wanting to meet you for years. And these are other workers that's, you know, on the shows. Willie uh, Mack being one of them. I've seen Willie Mack years ago issued a challenge. Yeah. Willie Mack happened to be on the same show as me back in Newark. And I said, it's going to happen. It can happen. We got, what, one more month left in the year that I'm sure you're going to see on the marquee Willie Mack versus the Soul Taker for the very first time in 2023. Fuck yeah, so man. That's going to that's going to be that's going to be something else. Yeah, it's so awesome. I I I was going back, I mean, shit, like 2016, I think was like the first time I, I seen him say something that he wanted to match with you, and then uh I just seen him recently or within the last couple of years, he was hanging out with uh, Santana Jackson. Shout out to Santana, another good homie of the show. Um, and he was saying, dude, he was like, I've been watching the Soul Taker since I was a little kid. He's like, I want this shit to happen. And, you know, come on, you guys are both. Yep, he said that. Rob Black's promotion, he's got to fucking book it, man. Yes. Well, yeah, he's got it. Rob Black is the only promoter right now that can push this match or unless I go out and make a statement on Willie Mack you never know with the soul taker or should I say 
the nigger taker is capable of doing. That's right. Hey, let me ask you this, because you're a very controversial figure in the world of uh, professional wrestling. And Rob Black, also, we can, you know, attribute him to being much the same. What What's your interactions and experiences been like with Rob thus far since the rebirth of XPW? Rob Black, when he first heard of me, he said, we got to get this guy in XPW. Do what it takes to get the soul taker in XPW because when you think about it, I fit in XPW. You know, my my style fit in that promotion. You know, some promotions I may not fit because they have to not give me the microphone because when I cut promos, you never know what type of bullshit I might say, you know. Like, I took on a guy uh, some years ago in a body bag match to set up the promo. And I came out and attacked him, and I said, now, the guy I wrestled kind of favored Chris Benoit, all right? Yeah. And, I, and I came out and attacked him, and I cut a promo, and I say, you may look like Chris Benoit, but when I'm done with you, you're going to be Nancy. You know, I say shit like that. <laughs> wow. That's great. <laughs> wow. see, see, you don't even know what to say. You guys don't even know what to say. I fucking no. love it. I love it. And you know, and you know when I go to and you know when I go to the shows, the fans chant, give him the mic. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've seen it, dude. So that's what yep. basically you do. I saw you you even got uh Shaggy Two Dope and Violent J out doing you know the Juggalo Championship wrestling. You kind of got them guys fucking sweating bullets. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. As you see at the end of that, uh he said, Thank you for saving my ass because I was letting them have it because I don't know too many guys that can shut up the insane clown posse when they're talking. And I did just that. Because in that cage match, yep. I was getting ready to take on another good guy, a good friend of mine, uh, the monster Congo Kong in a steel cage. And before I went out there, Kong was like, you should go out there and cut a promo. This is the place to do it. They like controversy. The juggalos there did not know how to react when I came out there. All and of a sudden, like, they got all PC, ICP right? ICP loves that. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, I think it was Shaggy too, though, uh, in the back. He was like, uh, I'm glad uh, you didn't tell me ahead of time because it wouldn't have been... It wouldn't have made that magic. It was like a surprise that I said that. Yeah. You know. So it's rare that I said it's got to be something special. Like XICW, my home promotion. Uh, I've done it at Horror Slam for their anniversary show. And two of the wrestlers said the best part of that five on five elimination match was when I came out and cut that promo, when everybody had their mouths zip when I cut that promo, reminding people who I am and what I do. Fuck yeah. Hey, man, as you're, as you're getting the workout going and shit here, I'm curious to know. I think we're all kind of a little curious. I mean, dude, it takes a lot, a lot of energy, a lot of motivation, if you will, to fucking take all these souls down like you do. What are you listening to? What musically, what sonically drives the fucking soul taker? Any type of demonic music. Yelling and screaming and, and all that. Black people listen to that music too. <laughs> I know that. that. Screaming, Come on. You know. Terrence Hobbs from yeah, I was just going to say, Mike Smith. Terrence yeah, Mike Hobbs, Smith. There you go. <laughs> Father of the blast beat. Yeah. 
Yeah, I listen to a lot of Limp Biscuit, Kid Rock. You know, what I do, I'll have my Pandora on. And I'll put a lot of the wrestling music is all rock music. You know, a lot of this music I didn't grow up with. But when you get in the wrestling business and some of the wrestlers become your friends outside of it, and somehow you have their theme music in your head, where you're like, dang, this kind of sweet. <laughs> then you just go home and you start jamming it. Or if you're in the car, uh, and it, all of a sudden it comes on a radio, you turn it all out. I can be the only person in the car with a bunch of other black people that like rap and all that. And, like, and they'll look at me like, man, what the fuck are you playing? And I'm like, shut up. This is my car. And I'll cut it up louder. <laughs> 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 Soul Tigger likes Kansas? What the fuck? <laughs> All right, I pop for Kansas. I pop for him at AEW. Are you watching any of the uh current like mainstream television wrestling? No. It's only it's only clips that I see mm. when people share it. But other than that, no. But uh the only time I may watch it is when it's Royal Rumble and WrestleMania time. You know, it, it has to, you know, it, it has to interest me because it's like when you're in a wrestling business and you look at the wrestlers that's on worldwide TV, they are basically your co-workers, but they are like in a bigger level, you know, than, than us. It's like... Uh, it's like if I was a supervisor somewhere and you look at all them as managers, you know, in, in your store and you're trying to get to that level. That's right. the way I look at things. So that's, that's mainly it. Who's one of the, I mean, I know you, you say it really doesn't matter because no souls matter, but dude, there's gotta be that one fucking soul. That's just prime for the picking that you're, you could hang your hat up on and be like, that's right. I got that motherfucker. Who would it be for you? Well, my daughter is as growing up in the business and she said she wants to be the daughter of a soul taker. So maybe once I can't go no more, I actually, my daughter puts me out of my misery and beats me one, two, three. So I got to say, my daughter Mariah. Nice, nice. That's a very unique, That's a great story. story. She's <laughs> the one, right? She, she's the one who gives me that drive to keep doing it. Now, I wish I could have had her in New York, New Jersey, with me because I say it seemed weird without me having her because I have her every single weekend, you know, and she's at every show. By her being eight years old, I see her after the show helping the boys take down the ring, <laughs> move the padding and all that. And I'm looking with a big old smile on my face, and I'm like, dang, she's playing her dudes. Then I have to move her and say, get off the way. That stuff's too heavy. And <laughs> and she's very helpful. And And my daughter is, like, very emotional. Like, one time... I was the uh, pro wrestling all stars heavyweight champion, and I took on a good childhood friend of mine in L.J. Lawrence, and it was a casket match. And it's almost like when Yokozuna took on Undertaker at Royal Rumble '94, when all the villains came out. So yeah. the same thing happened with me in that, and my daughter was so pissed. You can hear her on the video tape saying. Uh, y'all better not hurt my daddy and she crying and getting emotional and all that then once I get took into the back you know uh, I have to tell her hey it's, it's part of the thing you see I'm still friends with these guys they didn't hurt me they're still going out to eat like normal you know but so yeah my daughter gets real emotional seeing me like that but I don't want her to see the nigga take the side of me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'm sure she's going to hear about it 
um, when she's when she gets older <laughs> to understand certain things, you know. But it's certain things that you don't want to expose your kids to. You yeah, <clears throat> for sure. Yeah. And I, I got to ask you this because that side of your character, like I said, I, I don't think you know we can sit and laugh about it and whatever because maybe you know maybe we're the ones that get it to some extent. You know, it's like. Uh, for you though, I mean, is this is this just something that I mean, pushing the envelope? And I think I don't think there's enough of that, especially nowadays. I mean, we're all products of like the 80s and 90s, you know, especially like the 90s when it was everything was shock this, shock radio, you know, shock television, whatever. And now every day, you know, today everybody's a fucking snowflake. And well, you can't say this or you can't do that. And I mean, is this right? Is there something, I guess, what I'm trying to ask you? Go ahead. Well, to me, this society became weak. You know, it's it's going down. It's it's like a lot of stuff where they had to cancel Pepe Le Pew, the skunk from Looney Tunes, because they said that character was harassing a cat. Yeah. You know, stupid stuff. It's just a cartoon where the skunk actually thinks the cat is one of their one of their kind, you know? Yeah. That's what make make it funny, you know? And just imagine if social media was back during the attitude era. People Man, it, don't you think that shit will be wild? It, it would be the wild, yeah. wild west. That's for sure. I mean, and who's to say that? I because I don't know. It's it's weird to say. You know, you think <clears throat> maybe this shit all comes down from like, you know, certain political parties or whatever. Which that's shit. I don't want to fucking get in because I don't give two fucks about it. Um, it's just weird to think of where it came from and. Because I understand being good to each other, right? Living by the golden rule, you know? You treat others as you want to be treated. Like, don't give a fuck about your race, creed, or any of that shit, you know? But at the same time, and much like I, I defend all the time, and I use Dave Chappelle as a perfect example, you know? Like, even him in this day and age, they try to cancel him. And what he's saying, like, his message is, if we can't fucking laugh at each other, where are we at, you know, as a fucking society? Yeah, and th- that kind of shit just, I don't know, man. It, it fucking gets to me because it's, you know, and I look at, you know, a character like what you're doing and it's like a breath of fresh air. It's kind of like, you know, kicking these motherfuckers in the throats and saying, hey, fucking live a b- little bit. We're not here for a long time. You know, we're here for a good time. Yeah, yeah it's lighting the fuck up. I- I'm sure, I'm sure down the line, you're going to see me on TMZ where controversial <laughs> character. Um, you know, something like The Undertaker on TMZ using the nigga taker. So I'm going to be the same person if they were to interview me on TMZ. I- I'm staying in total character. You know, whatever question they ask me, if Harvey asked me something, so why do they call yourself the ninja taker? And I'm going to say, well, I take nigga souls. I'm going to just be blunt. You know? Sounded like something out of Tales from the Hood, dude. Right? <laughs> why Why not? Yeah. My character is de- designed to offend the living. You can cancel me, but you can't bury me. <laughs> That's my slogan. You can cancel me, but you can't bury me. <laughs> I was talking... <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me i was talking to a guy <clears throat> on our facebook today and uh he's seen that we were having you on <laughs> and he uh i i kind of i kind of stole from your gimmick a little bit brother i'm not gonna lie uh he was like ninja taker and i was like say his name <laughs> and he's like i can't i don't want to do another 30 in facebook jail he's like i said it last time and i went i just got out of facebook day, jail and i was like man this motherfucker's becoming the candy man you know, right? <laughs> except you say his name once and you're fucking in Facebook social media channel. <laughs> right. I've seen that. If you say it three times, you know, nigga taker comes out. 
you know, uh, where can the nigga taker come out from? <laughs> he comes out from a a drive by car. Come after you. <laughs> but you know what? I was thinking about something since I'm going to be in XPW. There was something that I tried uh, uh, last year, should I say. And I called myself the American black ass, the soul taker. And I came out with biker stuff and, 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 and everything. And, uh, you know how Undertaker's music is, uh, you're going to pay, you're going to pay. And how it starts up dead, man. Walk the mind starts up with my voice saying, dun, 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 dun. no souls matter. You're going to lose. Don't get your shit confused. Dun, dun. And the funny thing is, uh, that song, my father wrote that. Like, he just used the instrumental part of that that music mm. and put it all together. And and I use, I actually use that. And, and it's like two shows that I did it on uh, when I was signing autographs. And people was like, when are you going to play do that, you know, American badass type of character. And I was like, oh, you mean the American black ass character? I just like to surprise people, you know. Hell yeah. Do what we got. And I'll tell you another, I'll tell you another, I'll tell you another funny story. The year that Jeff Jarrett got inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. I happened to be on a show with him. And I can just say this. Uh I went in front of the Motown Museum and I reenacted a Jeff Jarrett vignette. And I was like, my name is N I double G double A J A double R E double T. That's N J nigga Jarrett. Ha ha ha. Motown's greatest singer, Motown greatest uh wrestler, you know. I'm gonna have to send you that. It's on it's, it's on YouTube. And uh I showed Jeff Jarrett <laughs> that. And I had to warn him uh that I had to warn him that it's going to be uh something like Dave Chappelle. Right, right. What do you say? He is like if I was to try to get you to say nigga taker and you feel like uncomfortable yeah you, you know and that's how he was and brooklyn brawler came in and say why did you show that to jared and all that blah 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 and some another worker was like if jeff jared was drunk he would probably crack cracked up at it mm. <laughs> yeah he's off the sauce now i think he's sober he had a little problem with that shit oh yeah he was he, he had to get clean before he got inducted into the Hall of Fame that year. Oh yeah, that's yeah. I think he went through uh, the WWE's uh, <clears throat> the wellness me. program. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. We interrupt this wonderful episode for a short word from our shoot sponsors. Check out Slowpoke Toys to see an ever-expanding collection of toys and collectibles. Treat yourself and get something for you. Need to get a gift for a special somebody, a buddy, a friend, a loved one, a co-worker? It doesn't matter. Visit SlowpokeToys.com, the manufacturer of toys and collectibles you never knew you needed. Hey, so who, uh, what, what kind of like outside... What's some of your outside interests, you know, outside of wrestling, man? Uh, some of my outside interests outside of wrestling. Uh, you see, I'm at the, I'm at the gym now. So uh, basically the gym and spending time with my daughter. Right on. You get down with a, uh, I mean, the fucking soul taker you gotta be down with any like kind of horror movies or anything like that uh, the horror movies that I like I gotta say uh, I'm a big fan of the Halloween franchise even though 
some of these movies can fuck up storylines and all that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Friday the 13th series yes. and everything. And if you look at some of Undertaker's stories, he got some of his stuff from those characters. Michael oh, yeah. Myers did that set up in the original Halloween 1978. That's where Mark Calloway got that from, you know. And it's become iconic, you know. Uh, then you start seeing other movies uh, with other characters doing the same thing, sitting up. Where it became, you know, very iconic. So that's pretty much it. All right on. Well, dude, you got so any type of war movie? Oh shit! Fucking get swole. Let's see those cards. Oh shit! Give me the Lex Luger right there. <laughs> hey. Here's a shoot for you, brother. We had uh, Brian Cage on the show, and he was sitting there with us, and I swear he was fucking, like, flossing in front of us, just, like, and looking at himself at the same time, like, oh, yeah. trying to pop us or whatever. I'm like, brother, what kind of show you think this is, man? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> he was throwing him up. He was throwing him up. See, I had to move down. I had to move down to an, another bike because uh, somebody just came next to me, you know, playing they, they stuff loud. So that's why I had to move real quick. I might have to fuck them up, man. Break out the shovel. I might have to yeah, start slamming. The shovel. Yeah, you should. That's right. Dude, I love the... <laughs> No, I'll just pick up. I'll just pick up one of these bikes and focus <laughs> on one of the bikes. Yes, I love the fucking shovel. Then you really see me. Then you really see me on uh, headline. You said you love the shovel. Yeah, dude, you got to get some merch, man. Like oh, yeah. some little shovels with no soul oh, matter or some yes. shit on them. Well, a lot of my merch got sold out. You know, the no souls matter T-shirt, the no souls matter hats. I had no soul matter book bags. So uh, there's going to be new things coming up uh, within 2023. Speaking of things so coming up, soon. you got a you got a title match coming up here. Um, what I believe it's December 10th, right? Up in Michigan against TJ Meyer. That's right. TJ Meyer. They call him. The Ross Soul. When I'm done with him, that title is going to be fitting for him because he really will be a Ross Soul when I become the new Total Chaos Heavyweight Champion. What's the furthest you've been out um, travel wise to wrestle? Have you been out of the country or? Uh, no. Uh, throughout my lifetime, I. Went through a lot of personal demons, which would stop me, you know, uh, like relationship wise and and everything. And it's like other promotions from around, you know, the country want to bring me in. But the thing is, it's hard when you have an eight year old, you know, you still want to be, you know, be there as a father, you know, because I tell people my responsibilities at home comes first. Wrestling right. is never going anywhere. You know, the only way I'm going to stop wrestling unless a doctor says that, hey, you can't do this anymore. Or if my body says uh, you can't do this anymore, it's time to hang up the boots and do something else. But uh, but I always say, if you have a child, any of y'all got kids? Oh, yeah. Well, Sretton doesn't. I mean, he has to have sex oh, first, yeah. but he doesn't. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, do you get along Do you get along with your child's mother? Uh, Yeah, two of them, yeah. Yes, and I'm married to... We do. Well, some people... <laughs> oh, well... 
Well, you don't have no biological kids. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I have. Jesse, I have an. Jesse I have an oldest that isn't. No. Just imagine if you had biological kids and you don't get along with your kid's mom, and it goes for you too. And and say we had three other people. Say we put all five of these girls in a ladder match with a briefcase, and we call it the child support in a bait ladder match. Whoever gets it, they can cash it in on you at any time, any place, anywhere, where somebody is going to have to pay child support in a child support in the bank ladder match. <laughs> and that's a true statement. She could cash that motherfucker in anytime, any place, anywhere. You be at your door, doo, doo, doo. they bring that paper in front of you. She just cashed it in you're on your ass. <laughs> Served! <laughs> but, the good, but the good thing is I get along with my daughter's mom. You know? Yeah. You know, if she cuts me out for something, I just take it. But the good thing is we're not living together any, yeah. anymore where we, you know, arguing and all that. But I can just tell you this. Uh, I actually had her manage me a few shows uh, back in 2014, 15 or so. And I called her the queen of death, you know, and I was trying to reform that so my daughter can see her mom comes out to the ring with me. You yeah, know? yeah. It, it eventually will happen, but uh, I'm, I'm going to try to see if it can take place, uh, you know, next year sometime. But it has to be a big show. I'm looking at XICW, which is my home promotion where... I got started under Sweet Daddy Malcolm Monroe, God bless his soul. And and by the way, uh, today is what the twenty first, and it's his birthday. Um, he's one of the ones uh, that used to take on the sheet back in the day. Uh, and I had the Canadian Destroyer who uh, dug. Them were the ones that I was brought up under, and several wrestlers, you know, from from back in the day, you know. Uh, so I can just say I've been real grateful. I might not make it into, you know, the big promotion like WWE, AEW, but you never know. I might not even be a wrestler going in there, but I do have a great mind for the wrestling business. You know, uh, I'm a booker uh, for NWCW, Northwest Championship Wrestling. That's... Uh, in the Detroit area, which we run once a month, and we got a big show coming up uh, November, not November, uh, we just had that one, December 17th in Royal Oak, which I'm going to be taking on a big man, which the fans requested, Superman Onyx versus the Soul Taker for the very first time. Just imagine if Soul Taker was taking on Mark Henry. I would compare... Superman Onyx to uh, like a uh, Mark Henry, like a big, a big guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, I've seen him online. He's a big, <clears throat> he's a big motherfucker. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Yeah, he is. <laughs> oh yeah, and and a lot of the fans requested that Soul Taker take on Superman Onyx. So, if you go to the Soul Taker page on, uh, on Facebook, and you scroll down. You, you should see uh, one of our commentators uh, recorded live on Facebook where we had that confrontation and the, and the fans exploded seeing me come out to accept Superman Onyx challenge after Superman Onyx just competed in a handicap match and he gets on the mic saying, send me some better competition. Soul Taker music hit, people go crazy, setting up uh, live Saturday, December 17th, NWCW Winter Mania. 
Fuck yeah. He shouldn't open his mouth. Now he's about to fucking right? lose his That's- damn soul. It's over. I know the soul taker is not just an ordinary man. The soul taker is beyond the grave because Undertaker likes to bury people. I like to take the body, burn them, cremate them, and step on their ashes. Or should I say, have some animal piss on their ashes. I like it, brother. I like it. <laughs> Love it. Hey, man. Dude, Taker, it has been a fucking pleasure tonight chopping it up with you. Um, Right now, you could let, I mean, we've kind of, you know, dived into some of your upcoming events, but if you have anything else that comes to mind right now and where you want people to find you at, where they can hit you up, where they can book you at, now's the time to do so, man. Well, uh, I just started a Twitter not that long ago. It is uh, No Souls Matter One. We follow, and they can look at they can look at me uh, on Instagram at Evil Soul Taker. Uh, so yeah, so for the promoters, if they have Twitter, they can DM me on Twitter, uh, or if they have Instagram, you know, uh, hit me up on Instagram. And we can go from there. And I'm also on Facebook where I have a like page, you know, www.facebook.com slash the real soul taker. Then you can you can find me on there. It's, It's real easy to find the soul taker, otherwise known as the nigga taker. Hell yeah, brother. Well, Taker, I thank you so much, man. I hope we could chop it up again down the road, brother. It's been a fucking blast. Everybody watching and listening right now, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And make sure you follow the motherfucking Soul Taker on social media and keep up with all the fucking shows that he's being booked at. Because, And especially XPW, I'm super stoked. I know Rob Black, dude, I, I feel like he's got a hard on for a character like you, and he's really going to make some good use of it. So I'm... I'm super stoked for uh, the January show. I believe it's called We Are Not Your Kind. And uh, that should be fucking off the charts, man. So once again, thank you, everybody, for fucking tuning in. Thank you, fucking soul taker. Dude, you're the fucking man. Keep pushing the limits. Keep fucking taking those souls. And you know what? Until next time, we got a little thing we like to do. A little shout out to our homeboy, Easy E. Wet them up. Wet them up. Wet them up. Wet up. So fucking wet, for the soul taker you can't imagine. You fuck around with the wrong guy and he'll steal your motherfucking soul. That's a rat. No souls matter. <laughs> yes. <laughs>